Hey, what is up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different kind of breakdown. I've been doing these breakdowns. You guys have been really enjoying them. And uh, this is going to be a little bit different. So instead of just doing a breakdown of a scene I shot, we're actually going to take a commercial. I'm going to break it down for you exactly how it was lit. And then we're going to go and recreate it using cheaper lights and gear to show you how you can create that same look in your videos, even if you don't have really expensive gear. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this commercial that we're looking at here is a collaboration between Xbox and Taco Bell. It's something I saw a few months ago. I think it played during the World Series or something like that. Uh, it really caught my attention just because it's really beautiful. Uh, if we play through it here, we've got a guy, uh, you know, sitting in his living room. He's uh, taking a drink and he starts turning into Master Chief and uh, goes like crazy VFX and all sorts of stuff. And then he goes out and saves the world and uh, it gets kind of nuts. We're not going to get into the VFX stuff, of course, but I did want to go through just this beginning scene um, because I saw this a few months ago and I was like, wow, that's really beautiful. I, I love the way that this is lit and, uh, and I want to kind of break down how this is lit and then um, obviously we'll do a recreation of it as well. Now, first things first with this, I don't actually know how this commercial was lit. I wasn't there. I don't know the people that shot it. I, uh, you know, I haven't seen behind the scenes photos or anything. So I'm just like going in cold on this and just really just taking a look at, uh, you know, what's going on in the scene and then just breaking down how this was probably done. And there's a reason I wanted to do it this way, actually, specifically, rather than looking at behind the scenes photos, because... Uh, you know, it's one thing for me to go in and say, okay, well, this light goes here and then you put this here and you do this and it's kind of like, you know, just telling you exactly what to do. It's a completely different thing to be able to analyze a scene. And this is a skill that you absolutely need to learn as a cinematographer is knowing how to analyze a scene and look at it and figure out how it was lit. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing today. It's kind of like, uh, you know, they say uh, if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. If you give, uh, if you teach a man to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime, right? I'm going to teach you how to fish rather than just giving you a fish. If I just tell you this is what light goes where, then I always get comments where people are like, well, I don't have that light and you know, I don't have that brand or my lights aren't as expensive and I only have cheap lights and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is that that doesn't matter. What we're going to look at is not exactly what gear was being used in this, but what type of lighting they're using, how they're achieving some of those effects. And it's those principles and those theory that are going to make your videos look better when you learn them. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So the first thing you'll notice going into this, like the first thing that I always look for is we're trying to find our main key light. And we've got our talent here. Uh, obviously, you know, he's sitting in the living room holding his phone. We've got a few different light sources going on. So this main light that's hitting him, you can see it here on his face. We've got a little bit of light kind of coming down his face right there. It's nice three quarter lighting. It's a little bit soft. So if you look at the gradation between the light and the shadow, you can see how it's a little bit soft, not really, really soft, but a little bit soft. Um, hitting kind of the front of his face there. We've got the light breaking right on that corner of his face. Exactly what we always talk about that we want. And then uh, we've got this nice kind of silhouette on the back side of his head that is just framing him out really nicely. Now for this light source, you can tell that it's obviously coming from up here somewhere. And here's a little trick. Um, this light that's coming from up here somewhere is actually flooding all over the room. You can see shadows all over the place. You can see the shadow of the couch right there. You can see the light hitting the floor here um, up on the wall. So it's kind of filling the whole room. And uh, if you notice this shadow here, so we've got our couch right there, right? And then we've got the shadow of the couch. If you take this corner of the shadow and this corner of the couch and draw a line between those, boom, that'll tell you exactly where that light is. So that light is up here somewhere in this vicinity. Um, hitting our talent here. Now, I don't know if this was shot on a set, uh, like in a studio, or if this is a real location. I don't know how they hid that light up here. Uh, you know, uh, who knows what's going on there. I'm pretty sure this is a pretty big budget commercial, so this could be a set, or they could be doing something else to hide it up there. Um, if this was on set, then like this wouldn't, like if this was a studio, this wouldn't have a ceiling, so you could just throw the light anywhere up there. Um, but something's going on. Anyway, there's a light up there. We've got probably some sort of uh, spotlight or hard light with diffusion in front of it. I'm guessing like a four by four frame. 
uh, in front of that just based on how, based on the quality of this shadow. So it's not a hard shadow, so we know it's not a really hard source, but it's also not really, really soft, so we know it's not really soft. And and there's, <clears throat> you know, there's no way to get a huge like 12 by 12 frame into this corner anyway. So it's got to be something like a 4 by 4 or smaller, um, which is hitting our talent here on his face. So we've got that light coming in. Um, you can see that hitting the walls here. It's here. It's actually, you know, it's hitting this wall over here. We've got this nice uh, shadow line being created by this arch. And so you can see that kind of flooding the room. So if you look at these little hanging things up here, you can see that there's uh, these shadows on the wall. And each one of those is actually casting two different shadows. So you've got a shadow right here that's kind of a harder shadow. And then you've got a shadow down here a little bit lower that's a lighter shadow. That might be hard to see. Uh, but each one of them is casting two different shadows. So this this lighter, softer shadow is what's coming from this light source over here. We've got a soft light source coming there. This harder shadow kind of hits right there. And if we do this, use the same trick, we take the corner of that shadow and the corner of the light and draw a line between them, you'll notice that it brings us right down here to this TV. So I don't know if this is actually a TV. My guess is probably not. We've got a light that looks like a TV, um, basically just blasting the entire room with a little bit more hard light. And basically what we're doing with that was just motivating TV light. Um, we've got this whole like blue kind of glow throughout the scene that's coming from that TV, which makes it look like he's watching TV basically. Um, it's not as bright as this light up here. Obviously we're getting a, more of a key on his face here. And then this is just kind of filling in the shadows. Um, but there is that light happening right there as well. Now the most obvious lights in the scene are probably these practicals. So if you look at these lamps, um, we've just got a bulb in there. Uh, this practical is kind of casting a nice little light on the couch here. These are dimmed down so that they're not hitting him. We're still getting a really nice shadow on this side of his face. So we don't want that to be orange. Um, and there's another one over here where we've got a nice little kind of effect happening on the walls there. And then we've got this lamp creating this little glow on the, the blinds there. Now, the last thing happening in this scene is our lights outside. So we've got shears in front of this window, which is going to soften up that light coming into here. And we'll see that on our close up how it, it hits him really soft. And then we've got another light source outside here somewhere. You can see the gradation here where it's brighter here and then gets a little bit darker here. We've got some sort of shadow going on right there. So there's maybe a tree out there. Or like I said, if this is on a, in a studio set, then they're just using something to make it look like there's a tree out there. Um, but we've got that light happening there. So with all of those things, that's kind of how this um, scene is being lit. It's not too complicated. We've got a main key light. We've got our, our fill or our TV light, a few practicals, and then a couple outside lights. And that's how it's being done. So now if we go into our close-up here, let me just scroll forward until we can find it. We've got a closer up shot of our guy here. Let's just find a good frame. Okay, and we can see a couple things going on here. Mostly, you know, it's pretty much the same lighting, but there's a couple things that I want to point out that are a little bit different that have been tweaked and changed just for this shot. And that's the cool thing about, you know, when you're shooting wide shots, uh, typically, you know, you're just kind of roughing in your lights and getting your scene to look right. When you come in close, this is where you can really start to finesse your lighting and really adjust it. So we've got the same light here hitting his uh, face on the front here. Uh, this doesn't look like it's actually changed that much. A lot of times in situations like this, you would bring in the light a little bit closer with your diffusion a little bit closer so that it gets a little bit softer. In this case, you know, it's already pretty soft. And plus, we're motivating TV light. And so we don't want it to be extremely soft. And so it doesn't look like they've done anything there. A couple things that have changed though is that you'll notice that this lamp right here, uh, in the original shot, the lamp was over here like this, shining on the wall in the background <clears throat> or on the blinds in the background. Now we can't see that lamp anymore. So that lamp has actually been moved over here behind his head so that uh, so that we're not actually seeing it. We're just getting this nice glow, which is creating this silhouetted effect, which is really, really beautiful. So we've got this nice light on this side of his face shadow on this side. You can see some of that um, soft light right here hitting him from the back window. And uh, and that's what's going on. The only other thing in this shot that I think may have happened is that this light over here, I'm not seeing any light kind of hitting these over here. Uh, I'm wondering if they turned off that lamp because it just wasn't necessary in this shot. So other than that, that's pretty much what's going on here. You can actually see here in the uh, reflection on the cup and on his nose and his forehead, the TV light that's over here. So we've got this really hard reflection happening in a few different spots right here. And then we've got this really soft light happening on his forehead and on his face coming from our, uh, you know, our main key light. So just another thing, those are things that you can be looking for 
to figure out where the lights are being placed in the scene. Okay, so now that we've done the breakdown, we know how it was lit, let's jump into recreating the scene using what we've figured out. So first things first, we had to find a living room that was similar in style to the living room in the original commercial. Now the one that we're working with is obviously a little bit different. It doesn't quite have the walls in the same place, but it's at least somewhat similar. Obviously as well, the production design of the original commercial is way higher. They've got, you know, there's a lot of work that went into really designing this scene and making it look good, which we didn't use the same level of uh, production design. Obviously we don't have the same type of budget, but we're really trying to focus on the lighting more so than anything anyway. But it's worth noting that you'll notice in the original commercial that the couch is brown and the rug is red. And so the things are different colors and we're working with a different color couch, different color rug in our scene, which is going to end up ultimately changing the color of the scene. I always teach that the, your color grade starts with your set design, right? The actual color of the objects and the furniture and the wardrobe in your scene. So the reason I'm saying that is because just know that the actual color of what we end up shooting is probably gonna look a little bit different, but we are going to get at least a very similar lighting setup, and that's kind of what we're going for. So the first thing we did when we went into this living room is we tried to move all of the furniture around. We moved the rug and the couch to kind of get things in place and set up our talent in the right place. We set up the camera so that we were capturing the scene. I think we had a, a 28 millimeter lens on it. I personally would have liked to go a little bit tighter, maybe like 35. That's just my personal preference. We had to go a little bit wider though because the camera was backed up against a wall. We're working with a little bit smaller space. And so with the camera up against a wall, we had to use a little bit wider lens in order to capture the whole scene. But once we got everything all kind of moved around and set up exactly where we wanted it, then it was time to start putting in the lights. So I started with the easiest lights, which are the practical bulbs inside the lamp. So we had lamps set up in the positions uh, that were similar to the lamps in the original setup. I went ahead and put in practical bulbs in those. The practical bulbs that we're using are the Aperture B7C. These are really cool because they're just practical bulbs that screw into a regular socket, but then you can control them with an app and you can make them any color you want. You can change the color temperature, you can change the color, the brightness, everything about them, uh, which are amazing for practical bulbs. So I highly recommend them. So I just put one of them in each of the three fixtures and then uh, just kind of got them, like at this point, we're just trying to rough things in and getting them just about the right color temperature, the right color for the scene. I'm not doing any kind of picky detailing right now. We're just getting the lights up. So next, after the practicals, I went outside and put up the lights for the window light. For outside, we used two quasar bulbs. So the quasars are long tube lights that look like a fluorescent tube. This is gonna give us a somewhat soft light that is that it's not gonna be like too hard and like shining through the windows. We just wanna kinda of create that blue effect on the windows like we saw in the original commercial. So I had each of those up on a C stand up there, just kinda of put them up high, and then I changed the color temperature to I think 6,000 uh, Kelvin. So really cool, making them really blue because we want that kinda of blue light uh, coming through the windows. So next after that, then I went ahead and put up the key light because our talent had arrived at the scene at that point. And so we put the key light up, that was an aperture 120D with a light dome in front of it. We originally had the grid on it, which is gonna help focus the light forward. And then I pulled the grid off to see what would happen because I wanted to see you know, how much we were flooding the room with light by taking that off. So I pulled the grid off of it and then decided that I actually didn't like that. And so we put the grid back on, uh, which just kind of helped focus the light from, at least from that light on our talent to make sure that it wasn't spilling everywhere. And then we can use the TV light to more fill the room with a different color. Now the Aperture 120D I know is not the cheapest light out there. It's around, I think $800. Uh, for, from my perspective, for what you get for the light, it is absolutely very cheap because the lights that they were using on this commercial were probably, you know, like airy sky panels or some other airy lights, which they would use with a budget like this. Those are anywhere from $3,000 to $30,000 for a light. So 800 bucks for a light that can do the same job is actually not bad. If you don't have 800 bucks to spend on a 120D, you can always go with some of their cheaper lights that are just as good, just as bright, um, just as accurate, 
and are you know around two hundred dollars. Um, so there are other options out there if that's too expensive for you. Now the last light that we set up was the TV light. What I did is I took my Aperture MCs, which are just little credit card lights that you can uh, you know put up there that are magnetic and will attach to almost anything. We put them up on top of the TV so that they were out of the shot, and then used little pieces of scotch tape to attach them just so, just to make sure that they wouldn't fall, and then set those to the right color temperature to give us kind of that blue TV light uh, coming forward onto our talent. So once we had all of our lights set up, then it was a matter of, well, now we just need to tweak all of them. And the cool thing about using uh, you know, the aperture lights and the and the B7Cs and the MCs is that a lot of them could be controlled with the Citus Link app. And so I really just went into the app and stood next to the camera and started adjusting colors while I was looking at our reference image, trying to get everything as similar as possible. So we wanted to get, you know, make sure that our key light was giving us a really good skin tone on our talent. We wanted to make sure that the MCs were giving us a good room fill tone, so that bluish, greenish color. And then obviously the quasars we can't change, so we're kind of balancing to those. And then the the uh, the lamp lights, we're trying to kind of dial in that orangish, yellowish color that's going to complement the scene really well. So once we had all that tweaking done and we had that all figured out, then we went ahead and shot the scene. We had our talent uh, you know, take a sip of his drink and actually uh, do the action of getting the scene. And then we decided to go in for the close-up. Now going in for the close up, just like in the original one, we didn't have to change much. It ended up being mostly the same. So when we went in for the close up, I switched to a 50 millimeter lens just to get that nice uh, longer lens look on this shot, which is probably what was used on this shot. And then the only change that we made here was um, we actually moved that lamp just like in the original one. We moved the lamp so that it wasn't on the left pointing to the right. We moved it so it was behind his head so we would get that nice glow uh, around him and then that was all we had to do so we went ahead and shot that scene as well now after we got everything shot then of course the last step was to take all our footage into the computer and start color grading obviously again we're not gonna be able to get the exact same color because the setup is a little bit different but I tried to get it at least uh, as close as possible but ultimately just tried to make something that looks visually appealing and so uh, I did a pretty basic color grade on it basically went through and just selected each of the colors in the scene and tried to adjust them and match them so that they would uh, create a harmonious color scheme so I tried to get the lamps to match uh, the reference image making them you know at least close to the same orange and yellow light and then also matching the room tone to that kind of bluish teal light that we were getting in the reference image. The only thing to be careful of when you're doing this is to make sure that you're not messing up the skin tones. And so in this particular example, rather than doing broad changes to color, like changing the color temperature or the tint of the image, I was really doing more spot color grading by actually selecting areas of the scene and changing the color there. So that way we were able to control the skin tones of our talent and keep those looking right while also changing the color of each of the individual lights around the scene. And I think what we ended up with turned out really nice. Even though it looks a little bit different from the original commercial, it still has a really nice vibe. And especially considering the small production value, considering that we were using much cheaper lights on this, uh, I, think, I think we ended up with something that looks really, really awesome. So if you're a filmmaker that wants to learn how to create images that look cinematic, this is one of the best ways that you can do it is by paying attention to what people are doing in movies and high-end commercials and breaking it down and trying to recreate it. This is a process that I call cinema hacking. And it's basically taking the techniques and the principles that, uh, the, that they're using in feature films, in high-end commercials, and taking those techniques and adapting them to your work. Even if you don't have the same expensive gear or a big studio or a big budget, you can still use the gear that you have in order to create something that's amazing. But there are specific techniques that you have to learn in order to be able to do that. So if that's something that you want to learn, I've got a free one hour filmmaking training. I'll put a link to it down in the description below that teaches my top 10 cinema hacks and how I've used this process to create work that looks cinematic and land high paying clients in my business as a filmmaker. So if that's something you want to learn, definitely check out the link down below. It's completely free. It's an hour long and I go in depth into everything that you need to know in order to learn how to do this, how to start creating cinematic images using the gear that you have right now. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and this breakdown. Please let me know down in the comments if this is a format that you want to see me do more of in the future. I had a lot of fun doing this and shooting it, so let me know if it's something you want to see, and we will see you on the next video.